Okay, this is homework help for slope practice. This is the homework for um, January 4th, 2016, if you can believe it. Um, so I'll start first just by talking about the ones that are relatively quick, and um, uh, I have them here now. The, the finding the slope by counting your, uh, by counting your rise and run. So we start off with a negative slope, one, number one. You get down out of your bunk bed before you can go running, so you have to go negative one um, for the rise, and then one, two, three is your run. So your slope is gonna be negative one-third. See, it's a little negative sign there. Two, using the same thing, I'm counting rise, one, two, three, over run. Three over one is the same as three. And then for number three, I'm counting rise over run, and it's seven that I count here, and three that way. <clears throat> for number four, this is, this is if it's a straight line, like a, like a horizon, like the state of Kansas, you have no slope. So the slope ends up being zero rise over whatever run. So this would be one between these two points. Um, but once you have a zero on top, you're looking at no slope. So we can say no slope and just box that. You can also say your slope is zero. For um, number five, rise over run is three over two. And then for number six, it's a little trickier. This is a um, vertical line. So your slope would have a rise, but no run. So it might have that two, position rise and then no run, but you can't do that. You can't divide by zero. That is like horrible and everybody just wants to cry because it makes um, the universe explode. No! Um, so we call it undefined because we don't even write this. It's so horrifying. Okay, undefined. So down here at the bottom, we just have some really tricky math problems. And um, I'm gonna leave that in focus for a little while so you guys can take a look at it and compare your answers. Um, you can see here that I've written out y2 minus y1, negative 15 minus a negative 20. And I turn these to uh, plus signs because subtracting a negative is like adding a number. And um, as it turns out, negative 15, that looks like a point, but it's not, negative 15 um, plus 20 is five. This ends up with a negative in the bottom, um, which again is horrible, no, ah! So um, this guy's scared, so we're just gonna write undefined and box that because we can't leave that zero showing. Um, here we have um, again, all kinds of negatives, a 10 minus a negative 4, and a negative 12 minus a negative 20. These turn to positive signs because the two negatives do that. Um, and it turns out we have negative 6 over 8, which simplifies to negative 3 fourths. Um, number 9 is no slope um, because we end up with no increase in, no difference at all in our y value. So um, because our, our rise ends up being a zero, it's a no slope. Number 10, um, again, it's eight minus a negative 20, which is like saying eight plus 20, and then five minus three is two. So we end up with a, a pretty large slope here, which is 14 when it's simplified. 11 might be a little tricky, they give you four points, so any two points will work, and naturally being lazy like I am, I chose the two that didn't have a decimal. So I chose um, 222 and 429, did all my math, um, and ended up with seven over two. Can leave it in proper form, there you go. Okay, in the back things get a little bit trickier. So these first two problems, they've given you two points, so you just use those basically to do your slope formula, but the numbers are big. So four comma 80 is your first location and 12 comma 160 is your second. 
Here's the math I did, 160 minus 80, that number over that number, over 12 minus 4, y is over x is, or rise over run. So I get 80 over 8, which simplifies to 10. So my slope is 10. And they say, what does that mean? Well, what the slope represents, you could say $10 per hour, so, so money per hour. Or for every hour that goes by, $10 are earned. Either of that will, um, will work because really if you're thinking of slope, slope applies to anywhere in the line. So for any hour that elapses, we're going to increase by $10. Or for any hour that elapses, we get $10 for that hour. Same thing with the peanut butter. It's uh, just big numbers you're dealing with. So um, only a slight rise, it's not a nine point rise is your X value, um, or sorry, a six point rise from three to nine, and then a 3,240 um, amount run from your the difference in your X values. Um, so we basically just did this, right? Change in Y um, over change in X. The, when I simplify, I get 1 over um, 1,080. And what that means, well, for every um, 1,080 peanuts, you need a new jar. Or for every jar, you need an increase of 1,080 peanuts, something like that. Um, here are the trickiest ones yet. Uh, you get these two points, 2,500 and 207.5 and then negative 500 and um, 212.9. So your difference in y value is, point, is negative um, 5.4 and then your difference in um, x value is 3000. Um, I kind of made this into a math problem just like this. I saw some of you doing that today and I thought it was really clever. So here's my change in Y that goes on top. My change in X goes on the bottom. Um, then I have to do some simplification to, to or some manipulation to make this fraction work because you can't, work, a unit rate might be able to have a decimal, but uh, a slope, we need a true fraction. So um, this is a really important point. Your slope has to be a true fraction. or whole number. You can't just, like I said, with the unit rate, you might be able to say, well, something is 1.5 miles an hour. Um, you can't do that with a slope. So what I did first is I multiplied top and bottom by 10 um, in order to get the decimal out of there. So I ended up with negative 54 over 30,000. That's a big number. I know I can simplify. So I just did a series of, of easier simplifications. I divided top and bottom by two, got 27 over 15,000. I divided top and bottom by three then and got nine over 5,000. I couldn't find any, um, I couldn't divide this anymore. So this is my answer. So I'm gonna put this in my slope section. And what does that represent? Well. Let's see, for every change in 5,000 of the x, I change 9 of the, um, of the y. And I just noticed I didn't put a negative there. And this is a negative slope. What? Wow. Good catch, Mrs. Reynolds. OK, so for every 5,000 um, foot uh, sea level increase, like when I go up in the mountains to my cabin, Every time I increase 5,000 feet, um, my boiling point comes down. See, I didn't get that. I love it when I make mistakes because it's so fun to learn from. Okay, so my boiling point comes down nine degrees. There is a decrease in boiling temp of nine degrees. Um, and finally, the staircase one, I'm running out of time on my video. It's a rise over run. So 
the riser is the rise, this part right here. Those are the risers. And the tread are these part right here. So they you're given basically um, your your length here, right? So most staircases have no, oh, let's see, I'm running out of room. Okay, I'm, we're going to talk about this in class. Sorry, um, I'm at my limit here of time. To be continued.